Hey guys, um, I wanted to try something different. So we're going to start a new, shorter video series. It's not just me dueling. Uh, this is going to be, I'm not 100% on the name, but I think it's going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! Or uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Why is it banned? Um, and this is episode one. And if you look uh, at the screen, you can see uh, basically the ban list. Now for those of you who are not familiar with the ban list in Yu-Gi-Oh! And what its significance is, Basically, other card games, what they do is they do a standard rotation. So they'll take, okay, we'll say only the cards released in the last two years you can use. Um, which, you know, in my opinion, is even greedier than what Yu-Gi-Oh! does. What Yu-Gi-Oh! does is still greedy, but, you know, it's a little bit more fair. What Yu-Gi-Oh! does is, okay, you can use any card, it's fine. However, there are exceptions. And there's a good amount of exceptions. And those exceptions are essentially the forbidden and limited list. Uh, normally, any card you can use three of in Yu-Gi-Oh!, but if it's forbidden, you can't use any. If it's limited, you can use one. If it's semi-limited, you can use two. And then cards can get off the list and it's back to three. Um, so I want to go over all the cards in this list. And the list is, you know, pretty expansive. I mean, it's obviously, you know, there's not going to be 100 episodes or something. But, you know, I'm going to try to do seven cards uh, per episode. You know, so it's not too long, but it's not too short either. And let's just dive right into it. So the first card is, oh my god, Apo Plifort Towers. And part of the reason why I can't pronounce that is because I wasn't around for the last, like, two years of Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is a pretty, like, recent card that got banned. Um, so let's read it. Cannot be special summoned. Requires three fly tributes to normal summoner set. If this card is normal summoner set, it is unaffected by spell and trap cards and by activated effect from any monster whose original level slash rank is lower than this card's current level. All spe so basically, it's unaffected by any effects except ex unless it's level or rank. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So unless it's 11 or 12, I don't even know if there is 12, um, it's basically unaffected by any effects at all. All special summon monsters lose 500 attack and defense, so if you wanted to just run over it with the 3,000 attack, you're going to have trouble with that too, because you need at least minimum 3,500 attack. And then on top of all of this, once per turn you can make your opponent send one monster from their hand or their side of the field to the graveyard, their choice. The fact that it gives them the choice to do it is pretty fair, but the rest of the effects are just, it's, it's really overpowered. I mean, first of all, the way the whole Q QLI, the way the whole QLI deck works, um, basically you can just uh, get a bunch of monsters out by pendulum summoning, and so it's super easy to summon this thing. And once you summon this thing, there's very little your opponent can do to take care of it. I'm sure this thing ruled over the meta. Um, I'd say maybe it would be okay at one, maybe, uh, maybe there'd be have to be a little bit more of a power creep because this was banned pretty recently. Uh, but yeah, so. So that's why that was banned. It's pretty broken. I would not. I wouldn't bring it back right now. This card. The next card is Blaster Dragon Ruler of Infernos. Sorry about the ringing in the background. Um. So I'm gonna have to do one of these basic. I'm gonna have to explain it for each of the Blaster monsters um, over again. So I'm not. I'm gonna try not to go too in depth with it because I'm gonna explain it over and over again essentially. But basically, when these cards were released. Um, it was essentially the four different elements of dragons, and you could just summon them over and over and over again. So let's read it. If, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can banish a total of two fire and or dragon type monsters from your hand and or graveyard, except this card special summon it. During your opponent's end phase of special summon, you return it to the hand. You can discard the card and a fire monster to target one card in the field and destroy it. If the card's banished, you can add one fire type monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use one of these effects per turn and only once per turn. Now, that last part makes it a little bit more fair, and there has been a lot of a power creep since the Dragon Rulers, so it's maybe possible for this card to come back, but I really doubt it. Um, it's just simply insane. I mean, all the Dragon Ruler monsters are insane. They banned the babies, but that wasn't enough. The regulars were just way too powerful. Um, basically, when this deck came out, it was the only, like, there was no meta. The meta was Dragon Rulers. You either play Dragon Rulers or you lost, basically. Uh, very few decks have that kind of status. A lot of decks have ruled for a long time, but they have some challengers. This deck had no challengers. Um, I still want to bring back the Dragon Rulers for at least a few more metas because it's just insane. But Yu-Gi-Oh! has a lot of power creep, so, and I'm going to get into this, a lot of the cards that were banned could potentially come back. So that is why Blaster was banned. This next card is one was probably one of the first banned cards. Um, 
Don't quote me on that because there were probably a few more that were banned before this. But I remember when this came, card came out, this card and Black Lester Soldier just completely changed the meta. And this is way back. I mean like eight, nine years ago, which is crazy to think about how long ago that was. Probably even longer ago. Um, so, cannot be normal summoner set. Must be special summoned by banishing a light and dark monster from your graveyard. You can pay a thousand life points and send all cards in both players' hands and on the field to the graveyard and then inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card sent to the graveyard by this effect. Yeah, this card is just insane, man. I mean, I don't... It's been, it's been like, almost a decade, and it's still broken. All the power creeps, all the crazy stuff, this card is still basically broken. Um, so just do the math. I mean, the one thing that's kind of nice about it is that he sends himself, right? He sends himself, right? So it's not terrible. Like, it's, it's not, like, 100% overpowered, but it's still 99% overpowered because... You know, you pay the 1,000, you send everything to the graveyard, including himself. So let's say your standard field, especially with all the card advantage you have nowadays, that could be 10 cards each. So imagine 20 cards get sent with this effect. That's 6,000 6, damage. On top of that, your opponent is out of cards. You're sending a bunch of stuff to the graveyard, including a bunch of stuff that was maybe, you know, really hard to get rid of in the first place. So I would not bring this card back. Um, I don't know what the hell kind of metagame we'd have to have for this card to, uh, to not be insanely broken. <laughs> Um, it's just, wow, this card is ridiculous. There's no redeeming this card. All right, now we have Cyberjar. Um, so Cyberjar is a flip effect monster. It's one of the few flip effect monsters on this list because flip effect monsters are so, are so slow that, you know, they they really aren't broken. But in this case, you destroy all monsters in the field. Then both players reveal the top five cards in their deck and special summon all revealed level four or lower monsters in face up attack or face down defense position and add any remaining cards to the hand now it's just this is just really broken um i play cosmo this card would be in, pretty crazy in cosmo but in a lot of decks i mean any rank four decks just special summoning that many monsters and adding that many cards to your hand you know and the fact that you can basically do it like either on your turn or during your opponent's battle phase so they can't like you know take that advantage to take you out um, it's just a crazy card, and I can totally understand why it's forbidden. It's forbidden in the OCG as well. Um, I wasn't paying attention to that to see if, what cards are not forbidden in the OCG, but there are some cards on this list that are not forbidden in Japan, and I think those cards would probably be safer to have back. But this card is pretty crazy. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't have it in the current meta at all. Now, Cyberstein. So this card recently got unlimited in the OCG, which means you can play three of them in the OCG. And despite that, it is still forbidden in the TCG. I think it should definitely come back. Um, it is a really broken card, especially when it came out. And even now, it is very, very powerful. But, um, you know, it is a 5,000 life point cost. That's pretty crazy. And special summoning a fusion monster from the extra deck is not going to be an, a game-winning effect. In the OCG, it is played here and there. But it's not, you know, the crazy broken card that people expect it to be. Um... Basically, you pay 5,000 life points, special summon one fusion monster in your extra deck to the field in attack position. Now, given all the fusion monsters we have, it's really powerful. However, a lot of the best fusion monsters have the uh, exclusion in their effect that says they can't be special summoned with, uh, with effects like that. So, you know, a lot of the best cards you couldn't even get with this. There are a lot of powerful cards you could get with this pretty easily, but... I think it can come back to at least one, if not three. I mean, honestly, you're playing three in your deck. Are you going to pay 5,000 life points three times? It might as well be unlimited. But it is it is a very powerful card, don't get me wrong. But I think in this meta, it's kind of, kind of caught up finally. It's not, you know, it's not insanely broken as it was. Now here we have Destiny Hero Disc Commander. Um, another very short card. It's just when this card is special summoned from the graveyard, draw two cards. Now, I have no idea what Konami was thinking when they released this card. Um, this card would, could not come back at all. Um, it's just too easy to special summon from the graveyard. I mean, you just special summon from the graveyard, you get two cards right there. It's just insane. You know, even if it was one card, it would still be kind of pretty powerful. But two cards, it's just it's too much, man. I mean, Destiny Hero has some oh, pretty whatever synergy. They used to have better synergy. But... Just I just couldn't see this card uh, being fair in any way. I mean, draw two cards every time it's special summoned to the graveyard. Um, this card is forbidden uh, for 
for a very good reason. Any draw two card like Pot of Greed or whatever should be banned because it's just ridiculously easy. Which Pot of, hopefully, I bought some <laughs> Pot of Desire, so I hope that doesn't come. Now, here's a card I'm not too familiar with. When you Ritual Summon a monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard as one of the monsters required for the Ritual Summon. If player Ritual Summons uses this card, the other player cannot special summon while that Ritual monster is face up on the field. So I 100% understand why this was banned. Um, <laughs> I mean, I know when Ritual Monsters were really big with like Necroz and stuff like that, um, it was even more, I'd say this card was even more broken in the past, not just because of the power creep, but because Ritual Monsters were more important back then. But even with Cyber Angels and stuff, this card would just be a, a must have in almost any uh, Ritual deck. You can basically take any Ritual Monster and not only make it easier with this card, but you can make it more powerful with the extra not special summon effect. I do think it's way too powerful, um, and I can totally understand why this card was banned. Um, literally, you just you know can spe you can ba basically ritual summon almost anything you want, um, and it's it's just way too powerful. I mean, the, the no special summon while your opponent has that on the field is just it's crazy. If it were both players, maybe, but just excluding just your opponent from special summoning, way too powerful, and you can't even do anything about it. So it's just no. And then finally. Last but not least, we have Freeman Nigga Stratos, Elemental Hero Stratos. Um, when this card is normal or special summon, you can activate one of these effects. You can destroy spell or trap cards in the field up to the number of hero monsters you control except this card, and then you can add one hero monster from your deck to your hand. It is a strong card, but it is limited in the OCG, and I think for a good reason. Um, hero decks are kind of powerful. Not super powerful, but you do have the Dark Law decks that are pretty powerful. Um, and what's funny is that originally it was just Elemental Hero or Destiny Hero, so the fact that they changed it to say Hero Monster is kind of funny because you're just making it more powerful than to ban it. Like, what's the point? But, um, but no, I could definitely see this coming back to one. I mean, I, I think this is one of the cards that were more unfair to ban in the first place. But anyways, guys, that's it for episode one. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It went a little bit longer than I hoped it would, but that's because I had to do the introduction as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, you can expect one of these at least once a week, maybe more often, so... Thank you so much and uh, see you next time.